Today, we're visiting the small village of Dunwich, located on the coast of Suffolk in England. During the Anglo-Saxon period, it was the capital of the Kingdom of East Angles, which is today known as East Anglia. Over the centuries, Dunwich has been inhabited by the Pagans, the Anglo-Saxons and later on the Vikings, giving it a very rich and diverse history. The interesting thing about Dunwich is that it used to be much, much bigger. During the Middle Ages, it actually extended out a mile into the sea, but due to coastal erosion and the light sandy soil the town's built on, it's eroded considerably over the years. In the Domesday Book of 1086, it was registered that there were 3,000 people living in the town, where compared to the 183 that reside here today. In its prime, it was a huge port, similar in size to that of 14th century London. There were many, many ships that trans travelled here in looks of transporting cargo and trade, and it really was a hustle and bustle environment. Unfortunately, all we're left with today is a few ruins and written accounts of what actual life was like here nearly a thousand years ago. On the 1st of January 1286, a great storm hit Dunwich, destroying much of the land and sweeping away many buildings into the sea. This was followed by another two devastational storms the following year, and by 1362, most of the town had been lost to the sea, including eight churches and hundreds of houses. A few hundred yards from the sea stands a 13th century friary known as Greyfriars. The original friary in Dunwich first appeared on records in 1277, but was moved inland in 1289 due to coastal erosion. It's believed that much of the friary was destroyed during the dissolution of the monasteries during the reign of King Henry VIII, leaving us with only a few remaining buildings. A precinct wall, a gatehouse and the remains of a cloister building, which was possibly used as an infirmary. The remains of the Priory were also used as a house, town hall and even a jail at various points in history. For generations people claim to have seen ghostly apparitions around the ruins of the Friary. It's no surprise that people think monks actually haunt this site due to the fact they inhabited here for such a long period of time. Another ghostly form people claim to have seen is that of a black shaggy dog with red glowing eyes. Although I'm very doubtful about these accounts, it does share many similarities to East Anglia's Black Shuck, which has haunted rural East Anglia for many hundreds of years. We're currently in St James's Churchyard, and what I'm actually standing in now is the chapel to a leper hospital that used to be here. Leprosy was a terrible disease. It was a bacterial infection which was extremely contagious. It could cause blindness, damage to the nervous system, uh, deformities, and in some cases, death. And because of how this disease ravaged communities, they built hospitals at the edge of towns and villages to house these people, and in some cases, try and nurse them back to health, which unfortunately never happened. Now, the strange thing is that although this churchyard and the uh, remains of the leper colony are actually, at the moment, in modern day central Dunwich, you've got to think in the Middle Ages, this would have been right at the edge of the village and due to the way the coast has eroded over the years, it sort of pushed this towards the centre of the town, which I think is extremely interesting. Over the years, many people claim to have seen ghostly shadow figures walking around the churchyard and the actual ruins here I'm standing in at the moment. The interesting thing is that although a tiny portion of the chapel itself still exists, it would have actually extended towards the other, other part of the churchyard. And could it be that any of these ghostly sightings are actually linked to the lepers that used to haunt it? Just reading on here, 
that it says the northwest buttress of All Saints Church. All Saints Church was the one that was just out out to sea from the Greyfriars ruins. That was the last one that fell in the sea, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, reckon yeah. So. it's the closest one that's in there. Oh wow. Um, so what me and Sophie reckon is that they this is actually the corner of the church that they rescued before it fell into the sea. And Completely. then they brought it here. Yeah, they've obviously taken it, brought it here for memorial and yeah. you know. Oh wow, nice brilliant. Church, so. Also if you look like the sides it's clearly like joining yeah woods. yeah oh wow so this is like the outside bit obviously and no i had no idea this was here that's a bit of a surprise to be honest. yeah so look this is where we are now um and up here is all saints church and we think it's the same church um obviously we're not 100 percent. so here's the grey fires ruins and, the, and the, the, yeah, yeah. the last we grave is just on this sort of corner bit here so this is actually coast now so we think that obviously it's this is all is what is in the sea. And yeah. So that was actually yeah. the last one that went into the sea. Then, yeah. well, that's the last one at this point. I don't know if there might have been more. Yeah. There's obviously more there. stretching out St Peter's, mm. more stretching out that one. Yeah. It's so weird. That thing. how many roads? You just go out there, we're gone. All that's gone. But the wall from this was at the uh, northwest. Northwest. Yeah. I'm gonna go with northwest. <laughs> northwest wall has now been moved over here. So that's what that's what we think that is. So yeah. the thing is, though, I mean. Although it's a very out there idea and it's probably not all, but there is theories that energies and ghosts can be attached to yeah. walls and such yeah. as that. Well, so you wonder... say with stone tech theory, that's made of stone. Exactly. <laughs> so it may, you know, it may have brought something over with it if there was a haunting there before. Mm. Despite there being the ruins of an ancient priory and a leper colony in Dunwich, there's been more ghostly reports at the seafront than anywhere else in the town. There's been a number of ghostly sightings along the coastline of Dunwich over the years. One of the most famous of which was people seeing a man hop into a boat and then drift slowly out to sea before disappearing before their very eyes. Could this man be one of the old fishermen who used to live in the town? Another regular occurrence is people hearing the ghostly sound of church bells ringing out at sea. There's actually eight churches that now lay 50 feet below sea level. And could it be that the church bells people are hearing the ghostly residents of these churches when they were on land? One of the more famous legends surrounding this coastline is that of the dark heart of Dunwich. The legend tells of a young girl named Eva who was set to be married to the son of a local landowner but fell in love with another man who had his way with her before leaving and running off to sea, never to be heard from again. Poor Eva waited many months for his return and in her heartbroken state, it is said that she took a knife and cut out her own heart, hurling it into the sea. It's believed that her spirit now wanders these shorelines where the land meets the sea, still waiting for the return of her long lost love. Her heart, believed to resemble a wooden heart, has washed up on the beach from time to time and brings great misfortune to anyone who finds it. How many of these stories and legends are to be believed is up to debate. Many strange sounds such as the ghostly ringing of the church bells could be nothing more than the sound of a distant ship out at sea. On our visit we also noticed that gusts of wind would blow the light soil into the clouds of dust that could easily resemble a ghostly form on a dark moonlit night. Later in the evening we sat down for a blustery seaside picnic and discussed an idea for the night's investigation. We decided that due to the large amount of ground we needed to cover, we would split up at the start of the night, myself investigating the Friary ruins, Sophie at the seafront, and James along the cliff face, where the last grave from All Saints Church is, as well as the supposedly haunted wooded area. After spending time at these locations, we agreed that we would all go over together to finish off the night by investigating the leper colony ruins in St James's churchyard. <laughs> 